This video will explain the Gao GAN generative adversarial network architecture. This is a really famous paper that has blown many people's minds with this ability to synthesize photorealistic images from these pixel maps. In the top images, these are just pixel map drawings of blue pixels labeled as sea, uh, light blue as sky, brown as tree, and then gray as cloud. And then the GAN model will synthesize the images below from this pixel map. So the key idea for making this work is the spade normalization layer, derived from spatially adaptive. So the idea here is that you take the uh, input pixel map and you're going to map it into a feature map of the same spatial resolution as the GAN's intermediate features. So we're going to learn more about this throughout the presentation. So this relates to the idea of conditioning GANs. And so one way of doing this would be to integrate the class label into the random vector input to the GAN. So for example, if you're trying to generate a dog rather than a cat, you might give it the one hot encoded class label. And another idea of conditioning GANs with the image to image translation, which is what we're doing here, we're going from a image, the pixel map, to the other image, which is the photorealistic image. You would condition it by first giving the GAN the original image to translate from. So rather than starting from a random vector, in image to image translation, the GAN, the generator starts from the original image. So the previous approach in image to image translation would be to take this pixel map as input and then use a gener generator in the GAN model with a series of transposed convolution or just a series of convolutional layers to arrive at the photorealistic image. So the idea here is that the conditioning is going to be done in the batch normalization layer. So rather than concatenating uh, the class label onto some kind of intermediate feature of the generator, the conditioning is going to be done in the normalization layer. So what a batch normalization layer does is it takes like a channel or maybe an entire height width feature map and it's going to normalize it so it has a mean defined by this gamma parameter and a variance defined by the beta parameter. So what happens in spade is the gamma and the beta are spatially adaptive. So they're, they vary at each y1, x1 coordinate. So across the height width, each pixel is uh, going to, each pixel is, will corresponds to a channel. So each y1, x1 corresponds to all of the ci's, c1, c2, dot, 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 to how many feature maps there are behind this, uh, behind this point in the uh, height width space. So they're going to derive their gamma, uh, beta, batch normalization parameters from a transformation of the input pixel mass through two convolutional layers into this uh, uh, feature map of the same size as the intermediate generator feature map. So this is what is meant by the channel-wise normalization. So imagine the, this red block corresponds to one pixel. So like this was one uh, y1, x1, y2, x2, and uh, y3, x3. So imagine that the gamma beta parameters are used to normalize the values across the channel dimension rather than the uh, entire feature map or something like the height width of individual feature maps. So this is the idea, conditional versus unconditional normalization. So local response normalization used in, batch, in uh, AlexNet and then batch normalization, they don't really depend on any input. They're, they're not designed to do so anyways. The conditional normalization layers are adopted from style transfer, where you're trying to take the style of one image and mix it with the content of another, and do this by preserving the semantic features in the intermediate feature space. And it's found that if you do this in the batch in the normalization layers, it works much better than just concatenating on the prior information onto the intermediate feature tensors. So here's how you would get to conditional batch normalization from spatially adaptive normalization, the spade technique in the Galgan. So all you would do is you would replace the segmentation mask with a single class label like 00010 and then you would have the same uh, mean variance modulation parameters for every spatial location. And those two changes would turn the spade technique to conditional batch normalization. So also spade and eta in. Eta in is adaptive instance normalization and it's also really popular in style transfer. So how would you go from spade to a to n? You would just replace the segmentation mask with another image. And also you wouldn't do the two convolutional layers in between segmentation mask and, uh, and uh, normalization parameters. And then again, the other key difference in spade compared to other conditional normalization techniques like a to n 
is the modulation parameters would not be spatially invariant, meaning that y1, x1 has the same gamma beta as y2, x2, and so on. And then one other difference between uh, spatially adaptive, this paper, and then eta n, is that eta n just has n equals one, meaning you're just, the size of the batch used for training is just one image. You're just doing one style image and one content image. Again, this idea of conditional batch normalization is all taken from style transfer literature. So how do, another interesting thing that GANs really struggle to do is to have multimodal outputs. And so this, uh, this technique actually uses a pretty simple idea for multimodal outputs. And because they are feeding in the segmentation map through the normalization layers, they, they can just use a random vector as the input to the model. And so they find that varying this uh, random Z vector achieves these different styles. Like you see how the top uh, pixel map with like this tree on some water is able to go from a day image to like a sunset image and then to like a morning image, all just through varying this input Z vector to the GAN model. So another thing that they do to assist this is they use a variational autoencoder. So variational autoencoder helps with multimodal synthesis by you take an image and then you encode it with the variational autoencoder and you'll feed that encoding into as the Z vector to the GAN. And variational autoencoders are super useful because you can normalize the encoded uh, latent space by having it not diverge too much from a normal Gaussian distribution using a KL divergence loss term. So this is the full architecture of how the spade is implemented. So you see it goes into these spade blocks, which is the normalization, then an activation, convolution, and then especially, you know, again, this makes up the block with uh, residual connections around each of these modules. So another interesting idea to note when looking at this diagram is that the segmentation mask is downsampled at each intermediate representation. So it goes from like an 100 by 1 uh, vector all the way up into some high resolution, maybe like 1024 by 1024 RGB uh, photorealistic image. So along the processing, the upsampling of the generator, the segmentation mask is downsampled and then put through two convolution layers. And then this forms the uh, get the mean variance parameters of the normalization layer across the generator's intermediate feature maps. So this is a list of some of the data sets that they use to uh, construct the Galgan model. Probably most interestingly is the Flickr landscapes. And I say that it's the most interesting, not because it's the biggest data set, because that's the Cocoa Stuff uh, data set. But it's really image interesting because they use the Deep Lab V2 segmentation model to label it. So they avoid having to have any hand labeling of the segmentation masks. So these are some of the really impressive results achieved with the Galgan model. And they also have like a uh, web app up that you can test this with if you want to do so without uh, you know, building the model yourself. So thanks for watching this video on Galgan. The paper link is in the description. If you thought this, uh, this video was interesting, then you'll really like the StyleGAN too because they also use uh, conditional normalization through uh, parametric mean variance parameters to control the style of outputted images in GAN models. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning paper reviews.